this evening. Please, one more round of applause for the filmmakers. Indianapolis Clowns played there, Homestead Grays played there. 
So yeah, some of the big teams, Kansas City Monarchs played there. So they definitely had that going in the 50s and 60s. We definitely have some footage in the film of the Indianapolis Clowns uh, playing. Uh, it's very hard to get some of this footage, yeah. if you can imagine. Uh, uh, stock footage or archival footage of the Negro Leagues is, is very rare. I'll put it like that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, it's a treat to get these, uh, this footage in one film. Yeah, we thought we won the lotto when we would find something. Like, oh my God. Every time we were jumping on the hallway, like, yeah, we got it. Uh, this question is from Michael. Um, as kind of, this seems like this was kind of your brainchild, right? Um, you kind of sparked the idea, but you already acknowledged that you didn't know anything about the connection. So what was it for you that said, I need to tell this story? Well, personally, from my family, uh, perspective. My grandmother met my grandfather coming out of church, going to baseball games in Alabama. And so the history of that created me to be here today. So it, it resonated with me on that level just throughout my family's uh, history. But as far as like the community, um, I saw earlier um, uh, Hank Tester in the audience, shout out if he's still here. There he is. <laughs> uh, back in, I believe it was 2020, uh, saw a piece that Hank Tester did uh, and about the Miami Giants. I loved the piece, I thought it was great, and I went running to the people at WLRN and, <laughs> and said, hey, this could be a good one, you know, we could tell more about this story. And we did, and it took. It takes a long time to go in depth and tell these stories. But we also traveled and went to Kansas City and Pittsburgh, so it takes some time. We have Thank one you. question upstairs. Hello. Um, earlier, you mentioned it being hard to get a hold of a piece of footage. What were some of the links that you had to go to to fit all of the kinds of research you wanted to into the film? Well. Uh, it's more about trying to find the footage. But once we got there, I think, Michael, when we started talking with people, people were very kind, very humble, very interested in giving us the footage. So it was not any hassles on that. It was more about our quest of trying to find footage. We wanted to find play-by-play -play in the Negro Leagues. Unfortunately, we couldn't because you know, it was hard to record anything, you know, because I guess at the time, you know, people thought that, you know, like they say in the film, they're segregated, so I guess their lives doesn't matter, so we get rid of pictures and things like that, or never take it, or whatever it was. But for us, it was very compelling to get this, and to show how the life of these African-American people was in those segregated days, it was, it meant to, a lot to me. And I think to Michael as well. Yeah, we, we also sourced some footage from uh, Yale University. And uh, some of that footage actually is from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so we talk about Juneteenth, and you see Juneteenth in action there. When you're seeing those uh, images of the parades, that's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So just seeing what life was like in the 1920s uh, was important, I felt, for this film. Yeah. Also, I went to add, uh, talking about the Yale uh, footage. It is amusing to me that we are here today and we can get our cameras and record something today that may maybe it's nothing for us, right? We are getting this gathering, but a hundred years later, somebody's going to be interested in, in knowing something about this. And that for me was amusing. So I had to say uh, to this amateur filmmaker, John, called Sir, Salomon Sir John, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, I really appreciate the work that you guys put in, and I'm glad that you represent so many parts of the cultures of Miami on stage. That's, that's beautiful, and we're moving in the right direction. Um, I'm chair of the Black Affairs Advisory on Miami Beach, so I would love to see if you guys actually have this showing on Miami Beach. It'd be fantastic. I want to talk to you guys. They want it there. And also, Dorsey Park. Is there any way that it's going to be historically designated like the Lyric Theater? Because as you know, land is very expensive and it may disappear. Is, is, is there anything going on now to actually save that park and have it historically designated? 
That's always the question, right? We get that a lot because as Miami's getting gobbled up, mm -hmm. right? How, how much longer? It's so the same the question. That's super historic. I dealt with that with Miami Stadium, where it was gone 20 years ago, and I put a campaign together to put a historic marker there. I don't know of anything that's going on personally. I'd be down to assist in any way possible. There should at least be some kind of historic designation, in my humble opinion. Definitely. We have a question upstairs. Hi there, uh, congratulations on this amazing film. And um, I'm a member of WLRN's newsroom, and I, I know that a newsroom member suggested a drive-in screening at Dorsey Park, so I'm speaking yes. back into the universe and hope that happens. And I don't know very much about baseball either, but I, I used to report on education, and when I reported on segregation and racial justice issues in education, I heard often, from black leaders, you know, things got worse for black people after segregation in some ways. Um, you know, when schools integrated, if you were a principal of a black school, you might become the assistant principal or a teacher at a white school, right? Like those demotions happen. And it sounds like in this film, there's a little bit of reflection on, on that, you know, the idea that integration was the end of the Negro baseball leagues. And I was just curious if you could reflect on that question about what changed after segregation for black people in terms of opportunities in baseball and, and elsewhere? Well, I think I'll, I'll let the educator on the floor handle that question. Thanks a lot. Integration had a interesting impact on the black community. I'll put it that way. Negro League Baseball was, was thriving until so-called integration. Uh, you know, I was watching the film, a great film. Uh, I, it made me reflect on my interview. I had the uh, great opportunity to interview Buck O'Neill. Uh, and I recorded the interview, by the way. He made a good point about the impact for example, here in, in good old Miami, right? There, there used to be the Mary Elizabeth and the Sir John Hotel, the, these these great thriving hotels that you saw saw some shots of in the in the film that people used to go to and so forth. The side, in addition to the the, the Negro League uh, games and the players and all of that, all of that is lost. You, you know, you talk to Dr. Dorothy Fields, the founder of the Black archives, yeah. right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and th this is a missing part of our, our history that's very important for us to understand. The impact of integration, how we lost these things. We, here in this overtown community, there used to be bottling plants and all kinds of factories and stores. And all of those things were gone, particularly when I-95 came yeah. through here. We know that, that history. So integration has a tremendous uh, impact, and if you, you hear some of my interview with with uh, Buck O'Neill, he, he says that he talks about it, and and the, you had folks in the Negro Leagues who understood this, that that these things would happen, uh, and they did come to pass. Yeah. Once uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a good point that 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 effort manly effort. Um, makes uh, that she says that um, you will be able to time it by a egg beater. The, the, the moment uh, a, a, someone like a Jackie Robinson puts on that Brooklyn Dodgers uniform that, uh, that will mean the, the end of the Negro Leagues. She's absolutely right. Hello? Hi, Hi. Hi. Um, really great film. I enjoyed watching it. So much information I didn't know in advance. But I do have a question about how you view what the Negro Leagues did for baseball. And I, I understand, Dr. Spivey, your, your point and the future of what baseball is because of the Negro Leagues in a positive way. So I really, really thank you so much for the the information. 
Is it a question for Dr. Spiegel? Is it? Is it a question for Dr. Spiegel? No. I think it was more of a. But I, general, I think, I think in, in general, I think. Yes, I think in general, like. Um, what the Negro League, uh, Negro Leagues did for baseball, uh, or and society, for for that matter, is really teaching that never give up attitude, right? Like overcoming all of these different obstacles. Uh, I think um, Bob Kendrick said it right when they say it's not about the money; it's always yeah. about the money. And in reality, they created a business uh, and a thriving business that became so big that now it was something somebody else wanted to take over or, or become a part of. But I, I do think that it spread baseball, that style of baseball uh, throughout this world. And, we, and, and the game itself, I think recently in baseball, they have changed mm -hmm. the way baseball is played, right? They, make, they have a timer on the clock uh, for different things. So they have changed the game uh, even without being on the scene, as, you, as they would say. So you, that's the way they were playing. A hundred years ago, so that's my thought. We have a question upstairs. Thank you so much for producing such an important story and reconstructing um, our history. Um, and I have a question. After seeing how, um, after so much adversity, um, there can be innovation. I, I thought that it was so important to see the equipment, equipment that was developed um, and adapted um, after the Negro League, um, you know, what introduced this new equipment. I want, I'd like you to elaborate a little bit about that, how innovation uh, took place. This song? Okay. I, I think everything that was done at the innovative is standard today, from the helmets to the shin guards. Or like they said in the film, that it, it's been hasn't been properly credited. So it's all stuff that from major leagues down to little league is used all across the board today. My question was going to be you know, after that. Me after that. That that uh, not only that, but when you look back to the, the shin guards, for example, uh, you can trace that all the way back to the, one of the first black actually playing. Uh, in, in baseball back in the 1800s uh, and as a catcher and, and, and with people sliding into him with cleats and so forth, he developed the, the, the shin guards or what later becomes the, the shin guards. And, and much of what you see uh, happening in black baseball in the later years is out of necessity. It's just good sense. I mean, you get hit in the head with a hard ball. <laughs> start thinking about, maybe I should wear a helmet. <laughs> these, these things just make sense. If you're trying to, as a catcher, and that pitch comes, I mean, you know, that, that pitch can kill you, right? It hits you in the chest. Yeah. You, you, you'll learn very quickly that you need protection. <laughs> time for one more question. Oh, Dr. Spivey, this question was, was to you. Uh, you may have answered it now the last couple of answers. What particularly, as you are being a historian for so long, what particularly about this topic tied you into it and made you become part of it? We, we call them. <laughs> good historian, you want to know, if a person plays in Missouri, you want to know about Missouri. If he plays in Alabama, you want to know more about Alabama. The Satchel Page played everywhere, right? so, which meant that I had to follow up and, and learn about everywhere, so to speak. But, but uh, uh, the, 
that history uh, was a driving force um, for me to, to do that. Uh, particularly, we, we needed a scholarly biography of Leroy Satchel Page and, and the Negro Leagues. And, and whether it took me 12 years, you know, other than I thought it was only going to, going to take two or three, and it took 12. But, but these were the kinds of things that were necessary, and I'm glad, I'm glad I did. As I mentioned before, I had an opportunity to interview many of the Negro League players, uh, and including Buck O'Neill, and, uh, and, and also some of the, the white barnstormers that, that uh, Satchel Page played, played against. Uh, Rapid Bob Feller, mm -hmm. he played against him. I interviewed uh, Mr. Feller uh, back then. He, he was, uh, one of the things you had to do <laughs> before you could interview Bob Feller was to join the Bob Feller Museum. Which <laughs> 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 I, I was already a member of the <laughs> But I know that, 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 that people had told me before you interview him, it will be a tough interview. Keep that in mind. He's really a difficult person. So like any good historian, I did background on him before I met with him. I knew the, the right things, I think, to, to say. And I started off by saying, first of all, Mr. Fellow, I'd like to thank you for your service in World War II. Right. You know, Bob Feller had, had quit the major leagues right at a time when he was making all kinds of money as the leading yeah. pitcher in the major leagues, and he had gone into the service and served in the, the tank corps, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, and, and came back uh, and was, was uh, some of these games on the West Coast, he was playing against Satchel Page and the Negro League All-Stars and, uh, and, and that, that sort of thing. But anyway, my interview with him went very well. He started off by saying, I think our interview will go just fine. Adrian, <laughs> <laughs> nice. we have time for one more? Okay, we have one last question. Okay, which is my... All right. Sorry, it's a, a well, we have competing microphones. Heads <laughs> <laughs> <Those are> or tails? <laughs> um, okay, well, I, I had a technical question, but I also wanted to give a bit of a shout out to the station and the filmmakers because, you know, in, in a city which is obsessed with uh, remaking its past and looking towards the future and more money, you pull on a thread, a historical thread, and it reveals a lot more. Um, I was interested also in a couple of technical aspects. Uh, for example, did you have, um, when the clowns footage that you got, you noticed that the cutaway, a lot of the crowd was white. And so that was a bit of a revealing shot. The other thing is that you have to re-digitize a lot of that file footage to get it up to technical standards. And the Caribbean and Puerto Rican and, the, and Cuban footage, I'd like to know a bit more about that too, if possible. Great question. <laughs> yeah, uh, as, far, as far as the footage of the clowns with uh, the white audience, like it's said in the film, the clowns brought people of every uh, ethnic, ethnicity out to see their games, you know? So the turnstile was clicking on all sides, you know, to come see the games. So everyone was welcome. That's one of the points I think that uh, Bob Kendrick makes as well, is that the Negro Leagues were inclusive. And so they brought out everyone with that. Uh, we definitely uh, up uh some of the footage, because some of the footage was very low res, or I started out uh, as SD or even lower quality than that. And so we did, uh, we up that. But in our search for finding archival footage, uh, we went everywhere, Mexico. So Fabian uh, had some connections in Mexico and so it yielded us footage as well as great photos. And my, my connection was the internet. <laughs> just my phone calls. That was the secret I wasn't gonna tell you. <laughs> we have a special connection. <laughs> I just pay a lot more international. Go ahead. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. That's the ball game, folks. Is that in your question? It's a comment. I'm a history teacher, and I just wanted to say, 
Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are part of the some lessons on black history in my United States history class. So what you're doing matters, and it's very important. It's part of Thank resisting what's happening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So this is Never Drop the Ball. That was a question and answer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uber Orlando for like a, for like a dream from the historical Lyric Theater in Overtown. Thanks for watching.